Even more important, physical infrastructure is a restoration government's investment in human capital development. At the inception of his government, Henry Seraki Dixon, governor of Bielsa State, Nigeria, declared a state of emergency in the educational sector. In the course of our days, we, we promised massive investment in education. That, that is why we promised you free and compulsory education for, for all our children in, in primary and secondary schools, school, with the emphasis on computer literacy, science and technology, because that, that is the way to the future. I am now to decide from today the takeoff of free and compulsory education at the primary and secondary school. Knowing the primacy of education as far as securing the future of Bielsa State and the promotion of our economy is concerned, the Governor Dixon-led restoration government in the last five years plus has executed major educational programs spread across the state, raising real hope of a bright future for Bielsa children in the acquisition of requisite and quality education as a catalyst for creating a better society. Infrastructure had collapsed, and the teaching, uh, maybe ability and learning standards had uh, uh, almost derailed. So to the extent that Bayesa was coming to the bottom of uh, in terms of uh, ranking in the Waek and Neko syllabus, that will just tell you how poor it was. One of the first things they did was to provide free school buses and free school uniform tuition free for all our students, especially those writing for WIAC and NECO examinations. And that had continued for the last four or five years. If you were a call, when we came in, the state of education in Bayasa was in comatose. Teachers were not teaching and children were not learning. Schools were dilapidated. You go all over, even in Yanagua, children were sitting down on very bad floors, damp, rickety, cracked walls everywhere. And so the first thing the governor did was to have a feasibility study and he massively invested on reviving the infrastructural status by renovating, reconstructing and building new structures for schools. The government has spent over 50 billion building educational infrastructure. This doesn't uh, include other recurrent investments in education. This is only money spent in building infrastructure, that is houses, you can see them in all the local government areas. Some local governments have two, three, and we are still going on. 25 constituency schools, boarding, but we are finished, and we are now equipping schools with beds, with phones, with lockers, fencing schools. This is something that this state has never seen before. Today in Bahasa State, education is free from primary all through to secondary level. Indeed, education is free in every sense of the word as essential materials such as school uniforms, sandals and textbooks are issued to students without a single cobo being paid by them. That's why it's fun to be in this school. Here I became more hardworking. I had to put more effort in, in order to make sure that my studies, I get the best of what I want. And also, the teachers here have been very, very um, good to me. They've helped me in so many ways. To say thank you is just a very small thing. If I had the opportunity to meet him, I would, I don't know what I would do because I'm excessively grateful to him. A very big thank you to our governor for not only giving us the best out of all, but also making us independent people in a way that we can stand among even modernized people and say we have a good education 
and it was given to us by our loving, kind, and fatherly governor, Traki Dixon. Changes in our schools has not just brought us here, but it also kept girls, young girls, out of the streets. So with this, I'd like to say that I want to thank the governor especially for what he has done. And I'm a, I'm a very vivid example for what he's tried to do for us. I really, really enjoy this. It's like an experience to me. And I would have been here. I would have been enjoying this if not for his support. So I want to say thank you very much. No doubt, the Dixon-led Restoration Government has shown uncommon determination, resolve and commitment in its drive to make Bayelsa a model state in Nigeria, a key center for learning and a major educational hub where government actually serves the best interest of the people. Since its inception, the government has kept faith with the payment of WAG, GCE, NECO, science and technical practical fees, and jump fees for all its students in the state. This is aside from its investment in physical infrastructure. The government of Bielsa State has, in the last five years, built over 600 primary schools with headmaster's quarters eight model secondary schools and 25 constituency schools with boarding facilities across the state. All these were built from scratch by the restoration government and fully equipped with science laboratories and modern facilities required for 21st century learning. The government has in addition rebuilt and upgraded St. Jude's Amarata Girls School the oldest girls' school, and Bishop Demiary Grammar School, BDGS. I think uh, this, uh, this idea also of boarding school, uh, you know the difficulties that sometimes the parents have to face uh, the costs of uh, not only education, but also supporting all the expenditures of, the, uh, of, uh, of their children. Uh, I am told that uh, this is a cost-free uh, school, that is, the, the state is uh, offering and paying for all the expenditures, including the food, the accommodation, uh, the uniform, the books, yes. everything. So, of course, to be sustainable, it must, co it must focus on, um, I mean, uh, children that have been already pre-selected to, to be the best ones. I think the idea is to, to give a chance to the poorest um, uh, people, the poorest children of the rural communities, which is actually an affirmative action. Well, this policy is really uh, commendable. I have uh, a special passion for the education of the girl child and to see what uh, the Biosa government is doing in this regard is actually quite pleasing to the heart and to the eyes. So I want to, on behalf of myself and those of us in Shell, convey our deep thanks to His Excellency. Imported to us from the white man. Now I made this personally by myself. So now I want to show you with a simple experiment that this one that I produce with local materials can measure accurately, like the way this imported one will do. The main scale reading is two centimeters, while the venous scale reading is 0 0.03 centimeter. Now I want to use the imported venous caliper to measure the same external diameter of this pipe. It is 2 centimeters the main scale reading, while the venous scale reading is 
0.03 centimeter. And when you sum up everything to get your complete data, you have 2.03 centimeter. So now you can now see that both the one I made locally and the one that was imported to me. <laughs> this school is a school that you can only come to by competitive examination. So we're teaching the very cleverest children in the state. And the idea was that you bring the cleverest people into one school, you give them good facilities, you give them good teaching, and they will flourish. Because naturally, clever children compete against each other. They like having other clever children to compete with. So that, that is the vision. And the vision is that we will be able to give these children who come from all walks of life. They, um, the vision is that when they come to this school, everything is provided for them. Food, teaching, all the other things that go to making a good, successful school. Everything I would really need as a student is provided for me, for the water, food, electricity, and other facilities. In this opportunity, I would say a very big thank you to the governor and all others that support the program. Because if not for this scholarship, to be sincere, I don't know where I would have been. Maybe my parents might have run out of funds and they couldn't forward my education. But with the help of the governor, I'm here today and I'm even preparing for my work and I'm very grateful. I'd like to say a big thank you to him for this privilege because I don't think without, without him would have not gotten this opportunity to be here. The free food, the free books and everything. I'd like to say a big thank you to the governor of the state. And thank you for giving me a wonderful scholarship like this. If not of him, I could have known where I've been, whether I could have end up in the village or end up in anywhere. Now that we have almost rounded up the investment in boarding schools, we have about uh, 14 or 15 of them. The German National Academy has already started. And we have 1,000 students there. The secondary school, but it's like a tertiary institution, bigger than most Nigerian universities and built from the scratch. The first tree that was felled was done by, the dog, by this dog. We did the first road there, you know, cleared it down, and everything there designed and developed by us. Now that place is set, 1,000 young biosans, and almost 100 of them from other Egyptian speaking states in the Niger Delta, because this state is the Jerusalem of the Jewish so when I give scholarships, most people don't know, I give scholarships also to other jobs in other states. The Governor Dixon-led Restoration Administration has more than doubled its investment in building the human capacity of youths in Bielsa State. It has granted overseas scholarships to 137 PhD scholars in one fell swoop. Also, there are close to 300 master's degree scholars attending the best universities in the world, most of whom have since graduated and are now living their dreams. This is even at a time when most state governments in Nigeria have withdrawn the sponsorship of foreign scholarships owing to recession and the downturn in the national economy. To run a PhD, Self-sponsor is very, 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 very difficult in terms of because we don't have the finances. But I don't know, I was looking for means and areas where I can get help. But the, the, the governor just came up. It's just an answered prayer. Voluntarily he came and he said he wants to take care of everything. And today he has fulfilled his promise by taking care of every expenses of my PhD work, my research work, everything, my tuition fees, they are taking care of everything. And today, the state is proud of the positive results of that venture, as recently, Mr. Pereware Victor Pere, an indigen of Bielsa State, emerged as a best graduating student at Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, United States of America. His colleagues also graduated with respectable grades. It is my pleasure to introduce the class of 2017 valedictorian,
Perry Rari Victor Para. Mr. Para has maintained a straight A average with a cumulative grade point average of a 4.0. You can come forward. He hails from Bialsa State, Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a resounding applause for our valedictorian, Mr. Para. Life as we know it has no limits. There are those who believe in your dreams, and there are those who will not believe in your dreams. It is okay. I come from a country which is um, currently going through economic downturn, but a friend wrote a speech, and I will read here. He says, just as high tides cause flooding in one instance, and yet produce electricity in another, we can progress by examining our perspectives in the midst of trying periods. Through all the uncertainty in present times, one thing is certain, there is always opportunity. I want to thank you all, my family, my friends, my siblings, the entire class of 2017, the entire Lincoln University, Bayasa State Government, Bayasa 21. I was very happy because that day, the effort we made, painstakingly, selecting 21 students from 7,563 applicants was worth it. And that out of the 17 that graduated, 15 made distinction, and the valedictorian had a CGPA of four on four point scale. That is a record. But the other record is that these students started late. And so instead of four years, they completed the program in three years and seven weeks. And that is another record. So I am very happy, and I'm happy for the governor, I'm happy for the Zoman, and I'm happy for the government of Bayesa State, the restoration government. Good. It was a good experience to see the world and experience new things, meet new people. It was very nice. I'm grateful. I'm very, very thankful for what he did and the opportunity he gave to not just me, but also the other students. I'd like to say thank you. I never believed. But when the whole thing started, it's like a joke that day, when they said they want to write an exam for this scholarship. There were many, I think there are up to 7,000 plus. I think so if I can remember the number. So I was very happy for my daughter, because it was not easy. But I'm grateful to God and to the Toknadu governor. The, like the mentality of every Nigerian, if you are not in position, uh, almost you are denied of every opportunity. So I, uh, we that are not in position, we never expected such thing to happen to any of them, like me. But it just occurred on God's grace, God's intervention. Maybe uh, the technicality of how the governor Syriaki handled the whole situation, that made it most disadvantageous parents, children, we are studied abroad. Driven by the understanding that the 21st century is largely one that is knowledge-based and the need for Bayasa youths to be in the forefront of this advancement, Governor Henry Siraki Dixon, in his bold bid to ensure sustainability of the huge investment made in education, sponsored two bills, the Education Development Trust Fund and the Higher Education Students' Loan Bill. Both bills, which have since been passed into law, are managed by people of integrity and proven track record in public service. You have the free hand wanted to underscore that there will be no form of interference whatsoever from me and from anyone in the government. Anyone in the executive arm, anyone in the legislative arm, nobody will interfere with the operations of this board. And that is actually one of the reasons we have all been carefully selected. People who will run up this body according to your best judgment and understanding. And that's what we have I thought I should publicly uh, say so. But that is critical to the issue of sustainability even of this initiative. But 
people must have faith and confidence that this board is truly independent, and I expect you um, to carry on independently. This trust fund, which is not a political will to create, I don't know of any other state government that has done it. I don't know of. Please, I'm with you to be a speaker. I don't know of any other state government, other than the federal, yes, the federal has done but not at the state level. So, we need to acknowledge you for having the political will to create. Indeed, Bialsa State is fast becoming the educational hub and epicenter of human capital development in Nigeria, especially with the establishment of the following institutions of learning. With the solid structures that have been laid so far, the future of Bielsa State remains very bright. In no distant time, the state will have more professionals in various fields that will, in turn, contribute to the manpower development of Bielsa State and Nigeria as a whole. And if we are able to groom these children to be competent in their learning and pass their final exams and enter into universities with their own competence, competing with others and excelling, then biases will not be worried about who will hand over to in the near future. Because these are the leaders of tomorrow. They are the people that will become the governors. These are the people that will become the lawyers, the doctors, even the commissioners, the directors, generals like us, every good thing you can think of about a human person who has been able to build capacity. This is what we are talking about. Biasans are intelligent. I have always said that we are the people who eat the best protein fish. We are very intelligent, we are very competent, and therefore given the chance that teachers are teaching and children are learning, we will excel. In the nearest future, we will not only serve in Bayelsa, we will export our products to all over the world, and they will actually excel. St. John's Girls Secondary School, as we know, is a school for girls, and it's, and it's enjoyable to come here every day due to the recent developments of the school. Just by walking in, you see, our, you see the buildings and everything, everything is just perfect. Just coming to school is so enjoyable. I'd like to say a very big thank you because we are so grateful for he enabling us to be proud of our school coming here. We can even we can say to others from model schools that St. Jude has been is a very nice school. I want to say a very big thank you to him because if not of him I wouldn't have been here. My future wouldn't have become what it is going to be tomorrow. No doubt we are witnessing the emergence of a new Bielsa. And in the succeeding years, so much more should be expected from the youths of Bielsa State, who will take their rightful place in the driver's seat of a new Nigeria. I have the honor to appoint you as honorary, special honorary education ambassador of Bielsa State. This appointment is made not only on account of the exceptional global profile and record as a Nobel unit, but also the well-known love for our people and passion for the democratization of knowledge worldwide. Yo
Tanto mais é boa.